have discovered the secrets of the universe. Oh my god, it's too gory. I can't do this. Hi, I'm Barney. James Barney. Hi guys. Uh, that was a bad entry. I look pretty smart, don't I? The glasses, the lab coat, these books. My talents include eating and I guess that's the only talent I have. If I'm not daydreaming about my hair flying in Darjeeling, Bollywood red sari moment. That's why I say my friend, enjoy the moment. Where's my original cup though? Hi guys, welcome to Journey Teachers. This is a very special video where my fellow Christites are going to talk about the TED Talk recommendations you should definitely not miss out on. And my recommendations are in the description below. Here you go. I have discovered the secrets of the universe. I just forgot to write it down. <laughs> I'm Prarthana and I come from Christ. Yeah, Christ University, that's the one. You know, the place where everyone is trying to get into or dying to get out of, yeah. It's all good. Right now, my life is at a point where my decision-making skills resembles that of that squirrel trying to cross the streets. Oops, did not make it. I don't have a plan. In fact, I don't have the pla in the plan to quote Phoebe. It's a good thing I came across Maitri Palker's video, TED Talk to be specific, and she told me it's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to fit into the societal rules of study, graduate, get a job, get married. She taught me how to write my own story, be my own storyteller, to experiment because in experimentation you find your answers, to embrace your randomness. And by watching that video, she taught me how to create my own niche because what is meant for me will come to me. But what are you waiting for? I know what I'm going to do with my life, do you? Well, if you don't, I suggest you watch that video. Huh. Looks like the squirrel did make it. If I'm not daydreaming about my hair flying in Darjeeling, Bollywood red sari moment, I'm probably thinking of witty answers to give pretending I'm on coffee with Karan. I'm Hiran Mai and I grew up on Bollywood. Unfortunately, given its infamous narratives, what these movies reinforced in my young mind were unjust definitions of masculinity and femininity. In his TED talk, Why I'm Done Trying to Be Man Enough, Justin Baldoni, Hollywood actor, opens a dialogue to redefine masculinity. He starts off by talking about his journey and how his on-camera roles, ones that ooze matches more on par, don't represent the man he is in real life. He talks about how growing up, he was given a script to be a man, hold a disgusted view against the feminine, feminine is the opposite of masculine, and either reject embodying any of these qualities or face rejection yourself. This is wrong, toxic, and must change, he says. From blaming his dad as a kid for making him soft, to now openly expressing his vulnerabilities, welcoming other men in the process, he realizes that before being a good man or woman, one must learn how to be a good human. Baldoni asks, are you as a man strong enough to be sensitive, to cry whether you're hurt or happy? Are you brave enough to be vulnerable? Such impactful questions asked looking straight in the eye is the primary reason I would urge you to watch this. Secondly, if you're a woman, watching a man talk about unlearning the patriarchy gives us hope. But if you're a man, watching this will push you to ask yourself, is masculinity everything I've been told it is, or is it anything that I want it to be? Watch this TED talk. Think, relearn, unlearn. Can you be man enough to do that? I know that you can. Hi, I'm Bond, James Bond. I'm actually Mohan B.S. and you can remember me as the guy who did the worst James Bond impression you've seen. The TED talk I saw was Do School Skill Creativity by Sir Ken Robinson. This TED talk speaks about creativity and the role it plays in an education system. When I notice this TED talk speaks about three key points. One, it professes that creativity is just as important as literacy in an education system. And secondly, it speaks about how the current education system has made people afraid of making mistakes. 
Thirdly, this talk speaks about intelligence and it shows us a broader sense of what intelligence means. Here's why I think you should watch this TED talk. One, we're all people in education, either as students or as a professor. Watching this TED talk will help us understand the flaws in the education system better and hopefully it will motivate us to change them. Secondly, this TED talk speaks about creativity and intelligence. We don't think about these terms a lot. Watching this TED talk will help us understand creativity and intelligence in a broader and better sense and thus it will change our perspective on creativity and particularly intelligence. Thank you. I look pretty smart, don't I? The glasses, the lab coat, these books. The lab coat because I did IEC science and I got 240 in a math test, but that doesn't matter. These books, the one of which I read. Again, doesn't matter as long as you look smart. By the way, I'm Manisha and my name in Hindu mythology means the goddess of mind and wisdom. So the TED talk I chose was how to sound smart in your TED talk. Step number one. Use your hands a lot. Step number two, ask questions to your audience. Here my audience are my stuffed toys. So, how does it feel to be a stuffed toy? Mm-hmm, thank you, that was beautiful. So now step number three, use a lot of anecdotes and images, but most importantly, use statistics and data. So, here is a percentage of GPA conversion. Studies, smart. Now, the reasons for watching this video. So back in 12th grade, this very video was inspiration for one of my English orals. It was called How to Boost Your Ego by Sounding Smart. And my teacher really liked it and said I do well. Reason number two, we all need marks for our CIAs, especially with them being video and presentation based. So this video will definitely help you a lot. Reason number three, Will Stephen, the speaker, quite the handsome lad, beautiful eyes. So if you want to sound smart, just like me, Watch this video. Hi guys, uh, that was a bad entry. So uh, my name is Mehek and one thing which I don't know anyone is that my dad wanted my name to be unique. So my name doesn't mean fragrance, it means bad smell. Cherry on top, I've seen most of you all. Actually, everyone in my life spell my name as M-E-H-A-K. Fair enough, but it's M-A-H-E-K because he wanted it to be unique. Please let this intro pass. So moving on, I am going to talk about BTS speech at the UNICEF 2018 annual general meeting. Uh, you guys already know how much I am inspired by them, by their dedication, humbleness, despite the phenomena they are right now. So they talk about what they're known for the most, which is loving themselves. They urge the youth to love themselves, respect themselves, have confidence, speak themselves, stand out, have big dreams. And uh, I just want to tell you guys that this is a speech where I turn up to the most. So if any of you guys are feeling low, feeling a bit lost in this huge world, are at the bar or like a bit confused about their identity, please check this speech out right now. And you can feel his raw emotions and power in his voice because he has been living the same thing since 11, just on a different level because he was in the celeb industry. So, you guys are putting the link down. Go check it out. Give a thumbs up. <laughs> and have a nice evening ahead. I'm Jay Shravi and I'm a prisoner who's blinded by the education system. Oh my god, it's too gory. I can't do this. Well, I'm not just a person who can explain it to you in a more creative manner. Sir Ken Robinson, in his TED talk, Do Schools Kill Creativity? Talks about how our education system is formulated in a way that it values literacy more than creativity. Our education system is a hierarchy based one, he says. He says that math, science is at the top, while arts and music and dance is not valued at all. He says that when the end of the world will approach, which the future generation has to face, of course, we won't need sine cos theta to fight it off. We will need our creativity and our survival skills to do so. And that is what the parents need to realize. My two reasons for you to watch this video, first one would be the issue. We're all byproducts of education. We all know how the pros benefit us, but we also know how the cons destroy us. I'll leave it there. The second one is Sir Ken Robinson. That guy with his charming personality, his humorous anecdotes, will create an environment for you which you would not want to leave. So that's it by me and G. Shravni. Thank you so much for watching this video. Goodbye.
Hi, uh, this is Abhimanyu Singh Champawa. Yes. My name has 23 letters in it. It did not fit in my board answer sheet, thanks to my parents. You must be thinking why I started with the guitar. Firstly, because the TEDx talk I'm going to talk about is done by Anup Jain, who's a musician. And secondly, the song I just sang is one of my original. And it connects with the topic how you can turn your sadness into some asset. So, he talks about three points for the sake. Emotions, both positive and negative. Memories and warning signals for change. Emotions and memories. He wrote a song uh, when he lost his father. And he basically tells how he compiled all of his emotions and negativity around him and wrote it on a piece of paper and composed a song. He beautifully did it and it's amazing right now. He talks about how one can channelize all their negativity and make it into an asset basically. Uh, warning signals for change. He advises everyone to incorporate them inside you instead of ignoring them and moving on. Why I would like you to watch this is because for a fact I know everyone is going through something in their life. And this trick of turning sadness into an asset is very important. So maybe try waiting it out, try writing, try doing something you like. You do you. Thank you. Marhaba. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ana ismi Alisha Sabahadan Akul Yam, made in Australia by Mass, also known as Mariam Haki, an Afghani radio presenter who uses her voice to raise awareness on the struggles of refugees and the lives of those left behind. Mariam recounts the horrific events that occurred during Russia's invasion where her parents were forced to flee as refugees from Afghanistan to Pakistan to eventually finding a forever home in Australia. Her parents were forced to stay awake at night due to fear of predators, but knew that they wanted to provide a better life for their children and took the difficult decision to migrate to Australia where they were housed in refugee camps. Maz then introduced us to Faria, her first cousin, who lives in Kabul and dreams of living her own life. Faria aspired to be a doctor, but was forced to quit school at the tender age of 10. Maz recognizes the privileges that she has in contrast to Faria who lives day by day. Let me convince you why you should spend just 12 minutes of your day to listen to this enriching TED talk. There are approximately millions of women like Faria who possess the thirst for knowledge, achievement and a prosperous life but do not have the opportunity to do so. According to the World Bank, an estimate of only 13.5% of Afghanis have access to internet. So it goes without saying that mass speech serves as a testament to gain insight into the real situation of Afghanistan and its refugees. To be a refugee is the opposite of an insult. It is a badge of strength, courage and victory. Thank you. A very good morning. I am Ashani Manohar and my name probably sounds familiar because you've heard of an Ashani. And my dad conveniently added that A because he wanted my role number to be one. Today I'm talking about Shashi Tharoor's TED talk on a well-educated mind versus a well-formed mind where he covers the importance of education in a country like India. India has one of the youngest and largest working population which can be exploited to our advantage with quality education and training. Without this, this demographic dividend can easily turn into a demographic disaster. Education in India can be summarized with four E's. Expansion, equality, equity, uh, excellence and employability. Education in India should start focusing more on vocational training and research as a result of which more innovations can take place. We need more well-formed minds that can synthesize information to react to a larger challenge, which is life. Two of the most intriguing points in this talk was the shocking difference between the enrollment ratio in primary schools, which is at 113%, as opposed to that of colleges, which is at 118%. Even in the time of the internet, our education that we are part of focuses on filling our minds, which honestly helps nobody. I have always believed that education is the answer to everything, but this talk covers why it is so important, the holes in our system and how they can be filled. Thank you. Hi, I'm Aditi Bali and my talents include eating and I guess that's the only talent I have. The TED talk I watched is called Turning Our Sadness Into Assets by Anup Jain. In this TED talk, he talks about his personal experiences and gives us three important life lessons. Number one, acceptance. 
All of us will be hit by grief and darkness at some point in our lives. We lose our near and dear ones at some point in our lives. The sooner we accept that, the better we'll be in the long run. Number two, directing our emotions. As human beings, we do not have control over, over our emotions. So we must use the power of those emotions into doing something productive. That's what Anuf Jain did. And he's released some of the most beautiful songs that are enjoyed by people of all generations. Hi, I'm Devika and I don't normally listen to TED Talks, but I might just start to. Dr. Brown dwells on the concept of connection, how it gives purpose and meaning to our lives and help us reach where we wish to be. But she found out that when people were asked about connection, they talked about disconnection. Courage and compassion along with vulnerability help us feel worthy of love and belongingness. During her research, she identified a group of people, called them wholehearted people, and they made her realize that vulnerability is not excruciating or comfortable. It is necessary. Vulnerability is the core of shame and fear and struggle for worthiness, but it is also the birthplace of joy, creativity, belongingness, and love. She explains how people strive to be something that they're not. They're perfect. They numb emotions. They pretend. Everyone is imperfect and wide to struggle, but is worthy of love and belongingness. Almost every person is afraid of opening up, being vulnerable. They keep their fear and pain for themselves. Dr. Brown's talk will open your eyes to the beauty and power of vulnerability. She speaks wonderfully on a topic that is not generally spoken about and explains how a trait that is considered negative is in fact one that should be celebrated and encouraged and its vitality in the search for love and belongingness. She offers empowering insight to open oneself up to being vulnerable and to rid yourself of the belief that you are not uh, good enough. This is Siddha. And if you're listening to this insignificant piece of carbon footprint by an insignificant human who coincidentally came into this world when his parents egg and sperm met on that particular day, out of so many others, Making me the element of survival of the fittest without me even born into this world, let alone what's next to come, I thank you. The TED talk I chose for today is by Mr. Yuval Noarari named Why Humans Rule the World. Basically, he drew a comparison between a chimpanzee and a human and if both of them were to be left alone on an island, the chimpanzees will be the clear winner in survival. But what if we change the number of humans from 1 to 1000? In that case, humans will be the clear winner. Why exactly is that? The answer is simple. We humans can cooperate in groups. We humans can create imagined realities. We humans can create fictional stories. We humans can understand each other through language and through emotional connection. And that's why we are on the top of food chain. The reason why you should see this TED talk is first, if this video was not enough to give you an existential trip, then that video definitely will. Other than that, human history is just so interesting. The possibility of you and me sitting here watching this video is one out of a million. That's why I say my friend, enjoy the moment. Hi, my name is Mukhlis Moise and you must be wondering why I'm on a terrace. That's because you're going to see a lot of people in their bedrooms, their living rooms, their bathrooms even, I'm not judging. I'm different. So, what TED talk am I going to talk about today? One second. Sorry, the TED talk that I'm going to talk about today is The Art of Misdirection by Apollo Robbins, world renowned pickpocket. In this TED talk, he goes on to explain the human attention through one of his own models that he created. He goes on to explain how the human attention works. One second. I'm so sorry. He goes on to explain how the human attention works and how you can manipulate it for your own devious needs. So why should you watch this? Two main reasons. One, 
it's great knowing about how your brain deceives you on a day to day basis and it's great knowledge to prevent pickpockets from taking advantage of you and to it is so much fun seeing him pickpocket people in front of them a live audience and live cameras so this one is definitely one you should watch and not miss out on where's my original cup though <laughs>